Hey everybody, Joe with another video, and I want to go over some of the uh, different things that I've picked up along with the uh, Grand Valley Layout Kit. Uh, you've seen the Grand Valley Layout Kit, and I want to show you some of the other stuff I picked up and some of the stuff I've done, uh, just to some of the stuff they suggest you pick up along with the Grand Valley Kit, or any of the Layout Kits, to make them a little bit easier. Uh, the first thing is this uh, foam cutter, the hot wire foam cutter. Now we all know how these things work, I'm not going to get into it, but you know, basically it plugs in here and it's got the bow and the wire here. Now what I like about this is it's a nice deep, you can really do some nice deep cuts. They even make a different bow for it, for like angled cuts and things like that. I don't think I really have the need for that. And basically what you do is it comes in these two metal pieces go into here, go into here, and they tighten down right here. And it comes with these two uh, little clamps here. You put them on. And I think what happens is is there's a small surge of electricity that goes up through here, and it's enough to heat this thin wire up. Uh, it's gotten pretty good reviews, but as we know, some of the Woodland Scenic stuff can get a little pricey. I think this was probably like, I pay like 28 bucks for it. Uh, these wires here that do the cutting, okay, they don't last forever. But Woodland Scenics does make a four-foot uh, replacement wire. Now, the wire that comes with this is only a foot long. This is a foot long wire right here. So the replacement wire that they do sell is four feet long. So you can replace this four times. Now this might last the entire uh, the entire time that I need it to, or you know, but what's nice is they did actually make you know the wire that you can replace the wire. And they they give you enough of the wire for like two dollars and fifty cents. They give you enough of the wire to replace this wire probably four times. Uh, this is pretty good. Like I said, it's it's got the nice deep bow here for like plunge cutting. Now Here's what I don't like about it. This is the button right here. You actually have to, it's real comfortable to hold, okay? I will say it's got like a trigger here. Trigger, it's not a trigger, it's like a, kind of like a trigger thing. But you have to push this thing, this yellow button, have to push in. And it heats up really quick, okay? Seconds. But you have to continually hold this button in. And it's kind of hard to hold in, and I can see myself getting a little fatigued with this. Uh, now, I'm not going to... You know, I'm not gonna. We all we've all used these things, so I'm not gonna get into how to use it. I mean, we all know how to use these things, but uh, the only thing I don't like, I think I would have liked an on-off switch better. But I did pick this up, okay. And uh, buddy of mine always already wants to borrow it, <laughs> you know. But uh, it, it's it's a nice foam cutter, although I think it could be a little bit cheaper. And I'm not nuts about this button here, okay. The on-off kind of like I said, you have to hold it, and I can see. It's, there must be a pretty strong spring in there. And I guess they do it for safety reasons, I guess. So that's the first thing I picked up. Now, we've all seen these before. Glue guns, you know. Uh, I did buy the Woodland Scenics one. I think this one was under $20. I think it was like $13 or something like that. There's actually a glue stick in here already. I was testing it out. Now, what I like about this is this does not melt the foam, okay? And I bought a package, of, I think I bought two packages of the 10-inch glue sticks. It does come with a couple of five-inch glue sticks, but you know how these things work. You let this now. This thing does not heat up automatically. You have to let it. It doesn't heat up quickly. You have to, uh, you know, plug it in, let it heat up. But what I like about this is because it's low temp, it does not melt any of the styrofoam, which is kind of nice. Now I'd be curious. I'm wondering uh, the uh, like if you had a regular glue gun with the with the Woodland Scenics glue sticks. I wonder if that would melt it, or if it's the temperature on this thing is set lower to not melt the foam. I don't know. But yeah, I picked this up. Another thing I noticed about this glue gun, I've used, we've all used glue guns. I'm not going to go demonstrating glue guns. We've all used them before. What I noticed about this, and I don't know if it's the glue or the way I'm doing it or what, when you're using a glue gun, do you ever notice you get those long stringy things that come out? I don't seem to be getting that with this. I don't know if it's the way I'm doing it, if it's the glue stick, if it's the low temperature, I don't know, but I did pick this up, um, you know, they suggest picking this up as well. Uh, another thing I wanted to pick up is, um, I know the kit does come with some paints, but I did pick up the uh, Woodland Scenics, uh, the Earth Color Kit, the pigment kit, and I want to mess around with this for a while, I'll open this up real quick, I'll show you, it's like eight, eight different pigments, they're not paints now. They're actually uh, pigments that you, and this is uh, yellow ochre, that you actually mix, mix with water. 
and for doing all your rocks and everything like that. Now, I got a really good deal on this on Amazon. That's why I picked it up. So we got that going. And I, it comes with a brush, too. But I'm going to pick up a bunch of foam brushes at, like, the dollar store or something. Those ones with the wooden handles. I'm going to pick up a couple dozen of those things because, uh, you know, they're pretty cheap. Uh, another thing that I did pick up, and you'll see these things here, is I've got one ready to go here. And I want to show you this. This is the Woodland Snakes. This is the... Uh, tunnel liner mold, okay, and I already have lightweight hydrocol all mixed and laid in here. Now basically what you're doing is you're making, these are going to go inside your tunnels, okay, these will, these will go the inside, so, like I've never done the insides of my tunnels before, so this is something I was, I've got three of them made already, but basically what you do is you mix your hydrocal, I mix it thick, and I'll tell you why, because since this is on like a slope, the first time I did it, it kind of ran down. So I mix it thick, almost too thick to pour. It's like the consistency of like peanut butter. Well, maybe not quite peanut butter, but it's very, very thick. And that's the way I mix it, okay? And basically, this is just a plastic thing. This is actually one of the cheaper things one of the scenes make. I think this was about $4. And you notice I have it clamped here. I'll explain why I have it clamped here. Now, this is all ready to go and dry. So basically, what you do is you throw your hydrocol in here. And you take, I usually use like a plastic scraper, scrape it, get it all uniform on top here like this, okay? And pour your, in, pour your hydrocal in and let it set up. This has been setting up about an hour. It's one of the things I like about the lightweight hydrocal. It sets up pretty quick. But again, I'm mixing it very thick too. So let's, I'm going to pop this out and show you because this is a little tricky. This is, I'm going to take the clamps off and I'll show you why I have the clamps on. The reason the clamps are on, there's a piece of plaster that just fell out, is this piece here, you could probably just cut it off, but it, it, it folds up on here. This is for a single tunnel, like this. If you wanted a double tunnel portal, you would mold it, you would not fold this piece up, and you would fill everything from top to bottom with the hydrocal. But I don't have any double tunnels on mine, I'm not going to have any double tunnels, so I folded this down. You could probably glue it or staple it or something. I don't know, but I use these little clamps that I had. I use these little clamps to hold it down. And it did a pretty good job. Done. This will make half of a tunnel liner. So I've already cast six of them to make three. I plan on casting about ten of them. Well, probably about at least six. But anyway, once it's in there, it's all set up. It's a little tricky now. I'm going to explain something. What I like to do is this. I push out the sides a little bit just to get a crack going down these edges. You can see the crack. You can see the crack down the edges where it's kind of loosening up here. Then across the bottom, I'll kind of fold it down here just to crack that edge on the bottom. And you'll get the plaster falling out. The stuff gets a little messy. So, and then I try to, I just try to kind of try to work it out. There, it just popped. And it's really easy to work out once it pops like that. The bulk of it, the bottom part here, just kind of popped out. You want to kind of avoid grabbing it and pulling it. And I'll tell you why. Now, I'm going to try and move this out a little bit here. Pop it a little bit. It's a little difficult. There we go. Okay, now it's ready to be pulled out. Okay, so it's popped out. Now, it's in there loose. I could pull this off right now. You want to kind of avoid grabbing it and pulling it because what I've done... Now, I'm going to do it now because it's all loose. Okay, I can pop it out now real easy. But, you get your nice, there's your half of a tunnel liner right there. You want to avoid grabbing it, because I, on three of these, I cracked it right across the top here. All you got to do is glue it back together. I glued it back together. I did not cast another one. I just glued another one back on. But, there you go. There you get your uh, half of a tunnel liner right there. And you want to sand it down. You want to square off. You want to square off that edge right there. With your, your, I use a sanding sponge. So you put it together. Sometimes it'll let me sand this down, okay? And then what I do is I paint them. I usually do it like this. I don't use these pigments that I just showed you. I just use regular, like the acrylic stuff you can buy at the Michaels and AC Moore and all that stuff. And basically what I do is I paint it black, all black, and then I dry brush a little brown on. Because remember, this is the inside of the tunnel. It's supposed to be dark. And then I dry brush some white on. Okay, and you want to take your two ends, you want to glue them together across the top. What I usually do is I set it down here, 
I kind of make sure this is as square as I can, it can be. You know what I mean? As square as it can be. I glue the top together, and then I take two pieces of plaster cloth and put the plaster cloth over the top to hold it. Okay, and there's your tunnel liners right there. Now these don't come with the Grand Valley kit, but I want to go ahead and put them in anyway. Now if you see on this one here, this top seam right here, you still see some white in there. I'll probably hit that with a little paint. Again, these are the insides of the tunnels. You're not going to see them, but the theory is, you know, once you have them, I'm probably going to use two on each portal. Butt them up against each other like that. And I'm not exactly sure how you go about this, but there's your tunnel right there, your tunnel portal right there. For the in, your portal will be out here if you could imagine. And this is your tunnel. Now, on the Grand Valley kit, there's two portals that I believe are on a curve, 18 inch curve. So I'm probably going to have to angle this somehow, maybe a little bit, I don't know, and then kind of maybe fill it in. But I've never done the insides of tunnels before, and now I plan on doing the insides of tunnels with this. I'm also going to hit this with a little uh, dull coat, just spray some dull coat on here. This one here, it looks like I did paint the inside. I painted that seam on the inside, but uh, yeah. This light white hydrocal that I use to mix it up, let me just get it, it's right here. Pretty good stuff. Uh, you can get this really cheap. I actually bought this at uh, Hobby Lobby. And if you have their coupons, their online coupons on your smartphone, you can get 40% off of this at Hobby Lobby. And I think it sells at Hobby Lobby for I think 11 bucks. You can get 40% off of it. Uh, I'm probably gonna buy an extra thing of this and if you're familiar with Smooth It, Smooth It is the uh, the stuff that they use to make the roads and everything like that. I've read online that uh, the Hydrocal and the Smooth It, you want to go buy extra of that. I also suggest you want to buy some extra plaster cloth. So I'm going to pick up some plaster cloths, a couple extra rolls of plaster. I'd rather have too much of this stuff than not enough. but. I'm not in a hurry, so I'm not going to let this eat into my budget to buy this extra stuff. So I'm in no hurry. If you watched my one of my other videos, um, I'm, it's June now. I'm not planning on uh, being done with this until October. You know, I'm really going to take my time. Oh, another thing I picked up too. There's two other things I want to show you that I picked up here too. Is this is the uh, Woodland Scenics foam knife, okay? And you may think it's just an exacto blade, and yeah, it is but it is a little different, and I'll show you why. I just got this today, actually. Um, this is the handle. As you can see, it's a little thicker than a regular X-Acto blade. Okay. Again, I got this really cheap on Amazon. It's aluminum. It's very light. It comes with one blade, so I'm going to pick up another blade. And just like with any knife or blade, guys, you want to be real careful handling it. You know, It's not for kids. Basically, you just slide it in there lock it down and there's your foam cutter and as you can see it's a two inch blade so it's nice for cutting deep into foam pretty nice and you want to be careful because these are very very sharp trust me over the years I've gotten cut by these more times than I care to admit Another thing I picked up and I have to admit I do not know how to use this yet <laughs> I'm going to this is a track gauge for Atlas Code 100 and Code 83 track. I'm going to be using Code 83 track. Uh, basically, it's just a little piece of um, metal. And one side is for Code 100. And this side here is for Code 83. The other side is for Code 100. Basically, it lays on the rails. And with this, you can check your clearance, check all that stuff. But another thing I picked up, and I'm not going to get into it on this video, we'll talk about it on another video, is I did pick up the, now I have this, I did pick up the um, Woodland Scenics Tidy Track system. Now I actually have this on a piece of um, PVC pipe so I could reach. I'm not going to get into this right now, but I did pick up this for uh, cleaning my track once I get into it. Now I'm not going to go into this, but these are just some of the extra stuff that I've picked up since I decided to build this HO layout. And these are some of the minor prep work that I've done for the layout.
uh, did the unboxing of the Grand Valley. And the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to start to get to work on it. So uh, stay tuned. And any comments, questions, anything like that, please be sure to send them in. And this is Joe again. Thanks for watching.